Hi again, this is Sarah I Repeat Crafter Me, and I am doing a video today to show you this really neat uh, crochet tool to help you uh, create uh, graph GANs or your C2C corner to corner projects. Um, this is a wooden yarn bobbin. This one has five spools. It is from uh, an Etsy shop called Martis Crafts. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I will put a link to it in the blog post. And um, the owner, Judy, is so sweet. Her husband hand makes these. They have the five spool and I believe also an 11 uh, spool bobbin holder. Uh, they may do other sizes, I'm not quite sure but I'm uh, sure you could go look on her Etsy shop or contact her. Uh, anyway, these are really neat and I wanna show you how they work. You have a spool, whoop, a spool <laughs> like this. You are going to uh, put your, wind your yarn on them. I'm using this cupcake uh, pixel graph. I'm sure you recognize this uh, from another project I did. And um, this will be fun. I'm just gonna do a little C2C uh, square out of this. Uh, so really, uh, forget the sprinkles. I may put those on later, but I only have, you know, one, two, three, four colors, including the background. So I have a lot of my colors set up. I'm just gonna show you on this one. Really simple, you're just going to wind the yarn on, hopefully as much as you can, so you don't run out too soon. Although, just for the sake of time in this video, I may not wind too much. But as you can see, I mean, it's pretty easy to wind. It goes pretty fast. Let's just do a couple more. And then we can get going. Let me see how much I'm gonna need to show you guys here. Okay, I'm gonna clip this off. And here on the holder, um, I've already flipped the top up here and the spools just fit right in. There's a little hole on the bottom and a little groove at the top. They sit right in there, put them all up straight. And then this top flap comes down they're all sitting correctly. This one fell out. Come on, guys. There we go. And then all you need to do, it has a little latch. Just latch it shut. And you're pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to start over here with this. And I've already created... Oh, where did my project go? I have a little... Oh, I have the first, like, seven rows already done. So I'm just going to attach my yarn here. Let me scoot forward and see if you can see this in the video once I get started. So, following my graph, I'm on a color change row, I believe, yes, which I did purposely so I could show you how this works. As you can see, the yarn just spins off these spools really easily. Okay, I have one more to go. Okay, and the next one, okay, my next little pixel square here is gonna be brown. So I'm gonna attach my brown. Oop, come on. I need to do three of these. Oop, come on. Okay, one. one of this brown you don't have to work this closely 
but I'm trying to fit everything in the frame of the video. Okay, so my last one is gonna be um, my background color again. So that's why I have two spools of my background color because I don't wanna keep clipping off my yarn. So I'm gonna be working, I'll show you in the graph real quick. So um, this background color is gonna be working up this way and the other background uh, color is gonna go work this way. So that's why I attached two. I'm right on this row right here. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm sticking my hands out kind of far so I can get in the screen here and I'm not sure. Hopefully I'm getting it all in the frame. It's awkward. Okay. I need a professional videographer. Email me if you're one and you want to help me out. <laughs> okay. So now you can see I have three strands connected so far. Okay, now that we have several strands attached to our work, let me show you how I can turn without getting too much of my yarn tangled. And I say that because some of the yarn overlapping is inevitable, but there are ways to work around that. And let me show you what I do. So when you get to the end of your row, you can actually just go ahead and turn and you could work with it like this. Some of the yarn is now overlapping, but when you finish this row and turn it back, some of it will um, untangle or unoverlap, and some of it may not, especially if you are have added in a new strand um, in the row that you had just crocheted. Um, but let's say something does get crossed over. Um, this yarn bobbin holder is so neat because you can just go ahead and open it up and let's say, okay, what's crossing over? You know, let's say uh, these two are crossing over. You can go ahead and switch them. And so it untangles. Let's put this back and let me show you what else I do. Another way you can turn your work. is, okay, let me just flip it back real quick. So another thing I like to do is physically turn the yarn bobbin holder. So if I'm getting ready to turn this, I am just going to turn the entire thing around. So now all of my strands stay just as they were, and you're just gonna be pulling up from the back side. So see how that works? I'm just pulling up and over, which works as well. And then when you're done crocheting this row, you can just go ahead and flip it back to the forward motion that you were in and then crochet your next row. So um, any way you work it, uh, this guy's pretty handy. So I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Feel free to um, see more details and where you can purchase this on my blog, repeatcrafterme.com. Thank you.